Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in recent videos, I've discussed how the terrestrial biosphere is in danger of tipping over from being a carbon sink, a place where carbon from the atmosphere um, goes. In fact, 30% of the anthropogenic emissions uh, from burning uh, fossil fuels is captured by, by plants on land, the terrestrial biosphere. But with business as usual and in, causing increasing temperatures, stressing the uh, forests and ecosystems on the planet, we're in danger of having the land surface of the earth tipping over from being a carbon sink to a carbon source. So the danger is that the sink, which is presently 30% of fossil fuel emissions being absorbed by the plants on land, that being halved to 15% by 2040, which, which will then cause huge rises in, in greenhouse gases and CO2 levels in, in the atmosphere. Now, of course, the Amazon is the biggest component of the terrestrial sink. It's the largest rainforest on the planet. So I'm focusing on that um, in this video. Okay, so if you just Google, uh, go in, just Google Amazon rainforest, uh, go to Google images, and of course, you know, you can see huge um, numbers of photos and information on the uh, rainforest and, and how important it is to, um, to, the, uh, to the globe. And I looked at uh, Amazon Rainforest 3D map, and there's some interesting articles here. Um, I just wanted to point out this one here, in particular, the airborne LIDAR uh, for archaeology in the Amazon. So if you have a plane that is flying about a kilometer above the forest, and you have a laser radar or LIDAR system on the plane, it can send out pulses of lasers and look at the short pulses and look at the reflected light. And th there's a d the, the, the um, best incarnation of that technique uses a laser pulsing at 300 kilohertz. So it's sending out 300,000 pulses per second. It's detecting the pulses coming back. And, the, and it tells you the distance from the plane to the canopy and the plane to some of the lasers get through the canopy and hit the ground and then go back up to the plane and it detects those so you can actually tease out the the underlying topography beneath the rainforest and if you have a laser pointing straight down and one pointing forward at two and a half degrees and forward at seven degrees as this latest uh, device does then enough of the laser pulses get through to the ground and reflect back that you can create this map. And so this is the, what the forest looks like from a plane above and the laser radar actually teased out this, this um, structure of this city of, of temples and pyramids, etc. You know, an amazing detail. Um, the, the article here, if you want to check this out, is Airborne LIDAR for Archaeology in Central and South America. So Teledyne Optech sensors on the plane, they map the ancient civilizations under the rainforest to extremely high detail. So, so basically you have, a, you have an aircraft here. Uh, you have the aircraft with a sensor underneath it and uh, over the forest and you can image you know, what's, what's below. So here's the sensor window of this uh, LIDAR and uh, you can actually uh, you know, process the data. So there's three separate laser channels, each firing up to 300 kilohertz. So, this, so there's th three of them. That's 900, this is a uh, kilohertz is 1,000 hertz. So that's 300,000 times three, 900,000 times per second. The laser is coming, it's coming either straight down, three and a half degrees forward or seven degrees forward and these different angles improve the chances that part of the beam will slip through gaps in the foliage of the forest and reach the ground and then the signal is detected and you can you can detect uh, what is beneath the surface so this is actually quite fascinating the amazon you know if you go to the wikipedia on the amazon the amazon is unique on the planet 
the Amazon basin encompasses 7 million square kilometers. 5.5 million square kilometers of that is covered by the rainforest. Nine nations involved. This is the, um, this is the drainage basin. This is the, uh, so this shows you the, where, where the forest is located in um, South America. Okay, and there's lots of information on the history and uh, activity and details on the um, wildlife that lives in the Amazon. Okay, um, now the problem is, is there's tipping elements in the climate system. Uh, another great Wikipedia page, and this is a diagram that I will, that I'm using from it. And I'll just, I've expanded this. So the Amazon is a huge potential tipping element in the Earth's climate system. Um, along with some of the others that I've talked a lot about are the Arctic sea ice loss um, and um, the uh, melting of green, you know, the Arctic uh, tipping points, basically. But we're also losing boreal forests, and uh, the Amazon is sort of a linchpin in the whole climate system. And the Amazon has been around for a long time. So basically the rainforest likely formed during the Eocene era, which from 56 million years to 33.9 million years ago. Okay, so it's been in existence for at least 55 million years. Most of the region has remained free of savanna type biomes, at least until the current ice age when the climate became drier and savanna more widespread. And now we're in danger of tipping the entire rainforest into, into savanna. Okay, through, so the tipping points um, are here and an interesting paper looks at the, it, it tries to associate the tipping points in the earth climate system with tipping points that we need in human society to address the um, the the uh, to address climate change and these other you know issues with uh, global water uh, security, global food security, etc. And there's different time scales associated with all of these tipping elements, as there are with uh, responses from humans. So there's basically um, a number of societal tipping uh, elements that need to be, things that need to be changed. And, you know, they're divided up. One of them is energy production and the storage system for energy. Okay, another one is human settlements, how we live in cities, uh, making carbon neutral cities. Uh, the third one is the financial markets. Okay, definitely divesting from all fossil fuels. And then there's the, nor the norms and values of, uh, you know, recognition of the moral implications of fossil fuels here, the education system on climate change, and information feedbacks, uh, greenhouse gas information disclosure, for example. And they, this is the estimated time needed to trigger social tipping. So there's some things that are very rapid, like, the, like fossil fuel divestment would have a big change rapidly. Uh, greenhouse gas information disclosure, same thing. Five to 10 years, uh, changes in cities and energy storage, slow systems, slow 10 to 30 years, the education system, and very slow, greater than 30 years, the norms and values system. So all of these things are in this very interesting paper on social tipping dynamics for stabilizing the Earth's climate. Okay, so it has uh, details of, you know, here we are, business as usual, um, here's where we need to go down here, you know, the Paris targets, etc. And how do we possibly get there with a limited time? And it talks about the different interventions that can be done um, and uh, feedbacks, etc. And the candidates for social tipping elements for rapid decarbonization identified by expert panels. And it shows the different things that are required um, lifestyles and citizen, education, citizen involvement, et cetera, et cetera. Very interesting paper. Now, if we go to Earth Null School and look at the Amazon, um, there's a couple things you can look at here. Um, so I'm looking at the chemistry, I'm looking at uh, SO2 production. 
So where there's fires and stuff in the Amazon, you can see hot spots sort of real time. Um, also, uh, you know, you can see the overlap. So when there's fires, you get NO2, you get SO2 produced. Um, this is a CO2 map. Um, so you can see where lots of the, the CO2 levels are lower, you know, in these regions where the, where the, um, where, where carbon is being absorbed and, and, uh, you know, you can see how the variance is, you know, in the different regions. Okay. Depending on how much is, you know, that depends on the sources and emitters and things like that. You can look at carbon, carbon, uh, carbon monoxide incomplete combustion you know you can pick out some fire areas you can also look at the particulates so you know when there's fires there's particulate matter put up into the atmosphere there's also the so4 again but there's uh these are 10 micron and smaller particles 2.5 micron and smaller one micron so you can see the different regions where there's currently fires under um, burning right now uh, you can look at the air temperature of the Amazon. So, of course, no surprise there. It's fairly hot throughout the region. Um, you can look at the relative humidity. And, you know, of course, it's very, very high, 99%. I mean, it's a rainforest. So these, these blue areas are, are 96, 97 plus, 98% humidity. Very, very high humidity in the rainforest. No surprise. Um, you know, you can look at the... Uh, other other factors like this is the energy in the atmosphere convective available potential energy the total precipitable water okay so these numbers are generally fairly uniform and fairly large uh, over the over the rainforest this is the total cloud water you can see the clouds um, and the motion of them etc um, okay so there's lots of information that you can get to examine the Amazon um, on Earth Null School. Now, this is the key paper, um, and I'll probably continue, I think I'll continue to another video to cover this paper in detail. So let's have a look at it. So this is a review paper that was just published about carbon and beyond the biogeochemistry of climate in a rapidly changing Amazon. So this is a very key paper. So, you know, th it talks about the, how the Amazon is the center of a discourse about, on, okay, so deforestation, huge problem, especially in the last few years. That was cut way back down. Um, it looked good um, before the new government came into Brazil in 2019. And of course, the um, clearing forests and, and deforestation and fires, et cetera, et cetera, have greatly increased in the last few years with the with the uh, new government in Brazil. Um, land use changes and global changes, okay? Now, most climate research in the Amazon has been focused on the cycling and storage of carbon and its implications for global climate, but not on methane, nitrous oxide, black carbon, the, the BVOCs, biogenic volatile organic compounds, aerosols, evapotranspiration, and albedo. Now, evapotranspiration is a key one because it, it, it'll rain in one area of the Amazon. Lots of water goes up into the atmosphere through evapotranspiration through the leaves of the forest, the rainforest, and it creates clouds. These travel to a different part of the Amazon and fall as rain, and the process repeats multiple times. So if you cut it off at the beginning, you can put the Amazon rainforest into drought. And of course, albedo is important. And so these climate feedbacks need to be considered in the forest and also their responses to localized things like fires, land use change, infrastructure development and storms, and also global changes. So the warming, drying, and uh, some related to the ENSO, the El Nino and Southern Oscillation uh, variations. and what basically is found in this paper is the current warming offset, the current warming from non-CO2 agents, especially methane and nitrous oxide in the Amazon basin, largely offsets and most likely exceeds the climate service provided by the atmospheric CO2 uptake. So the Amazon is already becoming a net source. Um, I'll continue. Thanks for listening.